Well, Richard, good to see you. Back to it after the summer break. First of all, just tell us how you enjoyed your summer and how you went about enjoying and reflecting on, uh, of course, great memories from the end of May of that playoff final. Ooh, reflect. I didn't have a lot of time to reflect on it, really. I, I suppose the, the days after it, it, it was all a bit of a blur. It was uh, just, uh, you go, has that really happened to us? Uh, and then you watch the game again and... Um, no, it was, it was fantastic, a fantastic day. Uh, in fact, all of it, I thoroughly enjoyed all of it. The, the week building up to it, the, uh, the, the work that went into the game, the game plan, the way things worked out in the game, and then the celebrations in the evening were, uh, well, at the stadium as well, the Villa fans were, it was just incredible. Yeah, an unforgettable day, I think. Yeah. And of course, you have been, you've had a break, but you've been spending quite a bit of time at Bodymore in, in between. Been a busy summer off the field. Yes, uh, I mean, Jesus is, uh, is uh, director of football, uh, along with Christian, CEO, and uh, we've had an awful lot of targets to look at. Uh, and uh, there's been work to be done, looking at players, uh, making sure that they're, they're, they're OK. Probably the background checks and everything, really, uh, that we get the right personalities and characters into the group. Because uh, whichever way you look at it, we, we lost, uh, I think we lost 14 players at the end of the season. And uh, some of those, uh, Glenn Whelan, Yedinek, Alan Hutton, uh, Albert Adoma, uh, uh, the, the boys that were on loan, all wonderful characters and all fitted into the dressing room, the, the ethos of it and the, uh, the work ethic. Uh, and they were a big part of it, so uh, we have to replace those. So that was, uh, that was an interesting time, yes. Just talk to us a bit how you've gone about it in terms of process, because of course, Hotter, for example, was through the door, I think, the week after Wembley. Yeah, well, in some ways, Hotter was an easy one. It, once the opportunity came to get him in here, having worked with him before, uh, a short period at Brentford, first time, uh, then he had to go back to Spain uh, to, to, to get things sorted out. And when he came back he was uh, to Brentford, he was Premiership class. It surprised me that nobody else came into him and he ended up going to Blues. But uh, to work with him again now, I mean, already pre-season, he's shown the quality, uh, the class he's got. Uh, and also the work ethic, I mean, uh, People tend to look at uh, wide players, midfield players, uh, they don't understand how much work they put in and I think Hotter's right up there with the running stats every day. And how nice to get some of those new faces in, the likes of Wesley, but also those returning players who impressed so much on loan here last year. Yes, well, uh, um, Ty and, uh, and Courtney uh, and El Ghazi, uh, all of them, uh, whenever they played last season, whenever in the group, they looked to quality uh, and they looked like they could all step up to the to the premiership uh, and, and the other thing about him is they were really good people you know and I always think the more good people you got around you the more chance you got of being successful so uh, they fit into the uh, into the culture really well and first day out here of course in the US Minnesota how have those new lads who are new to the squad fitted in well, they've been with us for a couple of weeks or 10 days or so and they, they fitted in really well uh, where's Frederick uh, you know, they, uh, they, they, they're both um, competitive individuals, I think we'd like to say. They, they don't like to lose, they want to be on the winning side. You can see that in the, uh, in the small practices we've been doing already. So, uh, so, so they fit in. Uh, we, we know about the quality because we've, we've watched them all the time. But sometimes until you get them through the door, you, you know, you, you can't go 100% that person or that character or fit in. But they've, uh, they've settled in really well. And they've had a chance, of course, to build up their fitness again now and so what's the required objectives this week and what do you look to achieve out here in America specifically? Well this week uh, I mean it's, it's obviously a lot warmer out here I, I think uh, the, the physical effort will be, uh, will be extended because uh, uh, the practices won't change that much we'll still be doing uh, high distances majority will be with the football uh, but they'll be put under pressure uh, because certainly this season I think uh, uh, in the Premiership, there'll be times when you're under pressure uh, with the ball and without the ball. Uh, and if we can create scenarios where they have to uh, still be organised, keep a clear head, uh, still be able to play, play forward at the right times, keep the ball at the right times, and sometimes just be compact at the right times, uh, then, uh, then those are things that will stand us in good stead for the season. So we're, we're, all the things that we do have always got an outcome we want to, and uh, uh, this week we'll be working towards that. And as an experienced coach, what would you say is the main difference between making that step up from the Championship to the Premier League and how do you implement that into what it's you a do belief. on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, well, it's a belief. I, I, I think that certainly the high-intensity running stats 
you look at that uh, higher in the, the Premiership. But the, uh, what the players actually do, I think it's a belief uh, uh, in what they're doing. Uh, and within that belief is the fact is, I think some of the top sides, Liverpool, Manchester City, uh, Spurs, Manchester, they all make mistakes. Uh, but you don't notice the mistakes because their reaction to it and their support of each other is, uh, is top draw. Uh, and we want that to be, uh, be Aston Villa. Aston Villa to play uh, a forward attacking game and we're going to make mistakes. Uh, you know, it, it, it's part of the game. Football can be random at times. But uh, if we can instill that even more and that belief that you can actually play at this level, I think we'll be OK. So it's about continuing that evolvement rather than changing the blueprint? No, I think the blueprint, we are what we are. I mean, uh, Dean Smith is, is what he is. He's not going to change. I'm what we am. And John Terry is uh, you know, exactly the same as, as all the rest of the coaching staff are. And you know, the sports scientists, uh, they, they, uh, they believe in what they believe in. And that's why they're here, because they, they fit in with what we want to do. And they are all good people. So, yeah. I'm going to touch briefly on the conditions out here. Even as we speak now, very humid. How's that going to make things for the players? Very tough. Very tough. I mean, you know, it makes it very tough for them. But the, I suppose the good thing is, again, they, they moan a little bit about it, like uh, any group of players. But this group, last season, we had days when it was tough and they moaned a bit, but they all did it. They all did it and they all pushed each other. Uh, and that's why we got promoted, I think, at the end of the day. How much of a test then physically is it going to be that Minnesota United friendly next Wednesday for them? Well, I think uh, you, you can do all the running you want, you can do all the small sided stuff you want, but when you actually get out there and you, you're playing on a full size pitch uh, and uh, you're playing 11 v 11 and you've got all the other things that go on top of it, the crowd and everything, then it just moves on. That's why we play a lot of games pre-season. You know, we've probably, some people look and say it's probably too many, but I just think building up that resilience uh, to, to the game, the, the, the tactical side of it, the organisational side and the physical side is very important. And you yourself personally, Rich, you've been with Dean all the way over the last few years, Walsall, Brentford, how much are you looking forward to making that step up into the Premier League, taking on the likes of Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea? I, I haven't really thought about it. It's, it's like, uh, I, I don't want to be blasé, but it's, uh, in some ways it's, it's another game. Uh, we'll look at the opposition, the analysts will look at them, this is their strengths, this is their weaknesses, this is what we need to do, and they're all better as that, you know, I suppose in some ways it's... I've been preparing for this uh, moment all my life. For like 30 odd years I've been coaching, so it's, it's taken a while, uh, but I've got it eventually.